Hello and welcome to another episode of We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. I'll be your host for this evening as always. And joining me tonight is a gentleman by the name of Graham Burroughs. Now, Graham is a lovely guy and Graham has been with us since pretty much the beginning. And so he is, I don't know, this is going to be called kind of just champions because Graham is pretty much one of our champions he is one of the guys that supports us he is one of the guys that is always retweeting our stuff he's always liking our stuff he's always listening so we really appreciate his time so as we approach our 100th episode I thought I'd get him on simple as Um, so good evening Graham good evening I was enjoying that I was just uh, (laughs) soaking it all in it's uh, (laughs) It's is it? I don't know. I guess you're kind of waiting for me to introduce somebody else. If you're hearing our voice, yeah, no, it is. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's kind of... I can't wait to listen to this. I oh, know <laughs> me in the car. Or... <laughs> don't like the idea of that. It'll be. I don't know. It'll be like being at a musical theatre show and then realizing it's yourself that's on stage, and it's a case of, do you watch and do you laugh at yourself when you come across the funny bits? Yes. Or do yeah, you definitely. look away and kind of cringe? But um, no, definitely laugh because um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's um, it's a delight to have you on. No, thank you very much. I, t- I mean, um, I, I I don't know what I'm doing here to be honest because you've had like loads of big guests and stuff on, and it's a uh, it's great what you're doing. Yeah, but it's just so, but no, thank you. I, you know, it depends on what you call good guests and what you call great guests and what you call important guests and <laughs> and we've been talking kind of back and forward for a while about doing yeah. this so as this is Colin would say tonight Graham it's your night so it's going to be the same as always so you can join in when you see fit but that sounds like you're going to have a big red book and there's going to be <laughs> guests and, and so first you t- turn it up as your Copy of Monopoly! Yay! <laughs> when did yeah. you first meet Graham? Um, I guess we better do the admin part. Mm-hmm. For people that are listening to us for the first time, thank you very much for joining us. The reason that we do this, Graham, is because... There's just simply not enough um, podcasts out there, and there's simply not enough that are done by two white men. <laughs> Especially not enough podcasts out there about board games. Yeah, did I not? Oh, did I miss that bit about <laughs> board games? <laughs> and the second reason that we do this, it's all right. We can record this whole thing again because I like, okay, as, you know, as you know, I like to edit. So I'll be take five. Then. <laughs> and the other reason that we like to do this is, as you say, um, we like to have people on to have a chat, and I wanted to have Graham on to have a chat. Because it's always nice to find out about how somebody got involved in the hobby, what they've been playing, and kind of what they're looking personally, kind of looking forward to. So, as we say, we like to we like to have a little peek back at the past. We like to have mm-hmm. a little kind of a, kind of a, a little stare at the present, and then we like to kind of gaze off into the distance <laughs> of the future, but. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got... Well, tell us a little bit about your history, please, Mr. Burrows. Um, yeah, so, I mean, board games was always something that we would go... You know, after Christmas, you might have got a bit of money. You'd go down to the, the local... Well, it was actually a co-op at the time, because I actually <laughs> come from Shetland. I don't know. So, uh, and you'd go and buy a board game often, and it was something, you know, like game of life, usually, those sort of things. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember we always used to play a game called Super Cluedo Challenge. Now, I don't know if you've heard of this one before no. or not, but it was like a deluxe version of Cluedo. Okay. It was not, not far off an Imperial Assault sort of box <laughs> style. And it had, you know, lead, lead piping. It was all sort of lead and, you know, it was, it was proper, proper components. <laughs> and... It took Cluedo to the next level because you put your cards into these sort of plastic envelopes yeah. or plastic trays that you clip together and they had little sliders in each corner. So you'd go around the board, you would um, 
look under an object, there'd be certain things like you've, everybody's got to rush to the, the statue in the garden. You'd rush to the statue and the person who got there first would get to look under one of these tabs. And it would be a colour or a letter or a number or something, I think, if I remember. All right. And you had, so it was really, you had to deduce these down because you had a list of everybody and they would have two two numbers and two colours against them. Yeah. So you had four identifiers for each card, person, weapon, whatever it was. And it was just a really good version of Cluedo. Not, I mean, Cluedo's good. I don't mind Cluedo. I, but it was just that... I never grabbed the rules. I never understood it. Yeah. It was difficult. But it's something I've never seen before <coughs> and I've never spoken to anybody else who ever seems to have played it. I don't know if we had the only copy in existence. And it, was <laughs> it was like a shit Made Shetland specifically for Shetland. <laughs> the shopkeeper was like sitting at night going, do you know, I've got an idea for a board game. What about you? <laughs> Tell you what, give us that card. And they maybe cannibalised the only copy of Deluxe. Right enough, it was published by Big Jim from the shop. So. Big Jim from the shop. How much is that? Well, how much have you got left in your birthday money, young Graham? <laughs> oh, I've got two pounds. Yeah. <laughs> pieces like that. I've got £4.87. That's just a ticket, because this is £4.86. <laughs> and here you go, you can have yourself a wee fizzy cola bottle. <laughs> And two half half penny sweeties. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I tell you what, yeah. you take that and two penny sweeties, seeing as it's Christmas. No, off you go, <laughs> off you go, you wee scamp, before I clip your ear. And away you went for your box. Your Board game your under box, underarm, <laughs> wrapped in brown paper with string, because you didn't want to get it wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> yeah, welcome to We're Not Wizards. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can see how people go off on tangents um, very quickly. It's, I just, um, I don't even have way. to, I don't even generally do anything. It's not like I ask <laughs> like, it's not like, like I ask like a leading question. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I go, and now um, after discussing kind of the roll and move argument about whether you should include it in board games, let's talk about your favourite version of uh, of macaroon bars. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> or any such kind of nonsense. So did yeah. you keep up with the hobby, did Big Jim invent? Other so games I mean, the games for the he, he invented this one called Advanced Hero Quest. <laughs> that, um, we we played a bit. Uh, we what else? I had Space Crusade, which I found recently at my parents, so it's really? now in my collection again. Hotel, the original one, you know, with the Waikiki with Waikiki, the yeah. big silver double towers, and it had Waikiki in it, and it had the boomerang. Yeah hotel in it as well yeah and, and the bo- we we pimped that bad boy up with micro machines instead of those little <laughs> plastic cars that you used to get so often oh, this sounds stupid but often we'd have an auction for the cars before we did the game so that you know oh, i want the lamborghini so you'd actually pay money for it out of your hotel oh, really starting money yeah but uh we'd have auctions just for micro machines cars anyway but like just the fake auction where we'd all pay money it's like we all wanted to play an auction style game but nobody knew knew the rules <laughs> <laughs> so we would end up you're just buying cars and then what's the end game here guys just got a heap of cars just dumb and, and no money. just really yeah. tiny it's not like i can use them i could just drive them about <laughs> with my finger and there's always used to be one micro machine where the the wheel for whatever reason got bit slightly bent out of shape and nobody yeah. ever admitted as it, it was them that was doing it and it always happened. And then it was like, I can't use my car anymore. It's just kind of going all over the place. It's making a big mess. And that was that. Did you play... I mean, I did you ever play Lost Valley of the Dinosaurs? No. Um, I, I don't even know what that one is. The, the one I remember somebody else having was Keat the Kingdom. Oh, yeah. I remember Which that. Which seemed like an overblown thing where you opened the board up at one point as well there was like a whirlpool in it and stuff but yeah what was lost valley the lost valley of dinosaurs was it? yeah lost valley of dinosaurs google it just now is this your musical interlude this is telling you to go and google lost valley of dinosaurs Graham. okay I'll, I'll switch my keyboard back on <laughs> no basically it was a big game it was a board game and it was the first game you had two big plastic, kind of p- pretty much mountains either on two corners of the game, except one of the one of them had a pterodactyl nest, and the other one had like a volcano. And what you would do is you would basically play like cards. There was like a 
almost like an event deck. But your okay. idea was to basically get all the way through past kind of like dinosaurs and the pterodactyl and steal kind of gold pieces from the Inca tem- temple. It was very, very well imagined. There was one like there was one like kind of um, <clears throat> there was a swamp in the middle that had a swamp monster that used to go around in rotation. Um, the little plastic figures. It had rubbish looking. It had rubbish looking dinosaurs that looked like they they dressed up for pantomime because they all had. It looked like they were all wearing red lipstick because they'd obviously yeah. tried to make them look very bloody and horrible, but they just looked like they were kind of missing out of a kind of a Scottish I've, Scottish pantomime. I've got that picture right here. Just as I you <laughs> mentioned that, that was the picture on eBay. It's like I've. Remember those pencil toppers you used to get that were really cheap plastic yeah. and looked like the guys out of Sesame Street that just went radio, radio, radio? Yeah. It's, it's like that, but <laughs> with lipstick on. Can you imagine if you're like in the jungle and all of a sudden? Not that obviously this would happen because unfortunately dinosaurs are, are extinct. Um, but you can imagine just going about the jungle and then this thing kind of launching itself out the bushes. And just having all you hear is maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's maybe <laughs> Zero Zero five, <laughs> get hot. As he flicks his hair. Exactly. Look at that. Yeah. What are you going to do? I'm going to cause carnage but look good at the same time. <laughs> the only problem was no wonder the lipstick was really badly put on, because if you can imagine a T Rex try to put lipstick on with those hands. Yeah. Yeah. You'd you'd probably have to have just to... prop it somewhere and just rub his face on it. <laughs> Either that is kinda of like asking other T Rexes to put his lipstick on. Yeah. And if they fell out, it's like go and put my lipstick on for me. Where are you going? I'm going hunting. It's like oh, I can't do this because I've got really small claws. <laughs> you, you made the right mess of it. And then if one of the T-Rexes wasn't talking to the rest of the T-Rexes, it have to do its lipstick itself. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, four ninety nine on eBay for a swamp <clears throat> monster. What's that? Yeah, one time sm- swamp monster four ninety nine. They're asking. That is absolutely they're, they're dreaming. I think the whole game was about twenty five quid all in all. Yeah. If that, I mean, that was old money. I mean, you're talking back in the late 80s, I think, Lost yeah. Valley of the Dinosaurs. So you talk Key to the Kingdom. Um, did you stay with board games? Did you, in fact, did you stay a long, much longer in Shetland or did you head off to the no, mainland? I, st- I stayed for my formative years in Shetland. Mm-hmm. Um, but we kind of moved on from board games. I mean, we never really touched, I suppose, your the ones that we would consider hobby board games now. Yeah. Um, it tended to be the big the big named ones, because, to be honest, that's all that the shop up in Shetland would get. Mm. Um, or Jim would create, sorry. <laughs> keep, keep the illusion. <laughs> exactly. I've got um, this Warhammer 39,999, <laughs> if you'd like it. <laughs> but it's a paperclip, a coin, and a pepper pot, Jim. Yeah, exactly. what's, what's, what kind of army is that? Jim, it's covered in cotton wool. Those are the, the orc sheep. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to get you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I mean, we kind of progressed on role-playing after that. So, very much started playing uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and some AD&D and Marvel and DC, which I annoyingly sold my copy of a f- 10 years ago, and now it's quite valuable. Um, what else? Call of Cthulhu. So that's what we kind of did when we should have been out drinking. Um, <laughs> was was going over to a mate's house and, and playing those, and and also Magic. We played a lot of Magic, but it was one guy who had a you know a, a biscuit tin just full of cards. Um, Where'd you get them from? Got them from Jim up the road. Jim up the really bad writing. On. All drawn in crayon. <laughs> What's that one called? That card's called shouting. <laughs> what do you do? You play it uh, and you shout at somebody <laughs> and tell them to go and sit in the corner. Does it work? I don't know. So you've played it as well then? <laughs> cool. You must have got some copies there on the mainland. Jim, Jim's working for Asmodee. <laughs> he's, got, he's got an up on in the shop. Um, yeah, so we used to play that a lot. Um, but it, we never really played it like sort of the building deck stuff mm. what tended to happen is the guy that owned the game he would just create some decks and we'd play with them and it was often 
a three, four, five player game of Magic. Now I don't know if that's even Is that if even you're actually work? supposed to do that. I don't know. Well, it, it felt weird because that's all I knew Magic to be was you know you could fight against this guy or you could fight against that guy or you could kind of make alliances and fight against <laughs> some other guy. And but you know coming down. Well, not coming down here, but getting back into the hobby in the last yeah. few years, seeing Magic as being a two-player game, it's like, oh, guys, you're missing out on a lot here. Did you, like, <laughs> walk into a room when you did, like, a first kind of Magic play and there's six people kind of sitting around the table and you're like, okay, who's first? Deal me in, boys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> kind of pull it. Why are you sitting all apart? <laughs> pull all the tables <laughs> in together. Everybody's staring at you. Okay, so you do that, you do that. Just mix up the decks, it's fine. Everybody's staring yeah, but, at you in horror while you're grabbing everybody's cards off them. I mean, it, it was it was literally, we played it like Smash Up. We would almost, you know, yeah. you'd look through the decks, no matter how many cards were in it, and, you know, we'd play with hideously bloated decks and stuff, and I fancy being red-green, just take the two decks, <laughs> shuffle them together, <laughs> and play it, and it was, it was weird. I mean, it, it probably meant, left, well, it made for some way too long games of magic you know it was you know you could be one two games a night sometimes just simply because there was four players <laughs> and everybody had 200 cards in their deck but uh yeah but it's like um you can play star realms apparently kind of multiplayer i've never seen that but I've, yeah i've heard i've heard of that and i just again kind of wonder that how that would work um i think Star Realms is 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 so tight and and good as a two player game that I mean it's the same kind of feeling I got with the the Kickstarter recently I didn't back it because I thought mm. adding more to it I don't see that that's going to make it a better game I think that I mean I I only have the 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 app to be honest I've got Cthulhu Realms which is very similar to the card game yeah but um. Yeah, I, ju- I, li- I just like the, the, the neatness of it, I think, to be honest. I think all, all that Star Realms has done for me is to make me want to play other card games of a similar type of ilk. So I'm already coveting kind of other potential card. You know, uh-huh. you saying Cthulhu Wars, I'm thinking, hmm, how quickly can I get Graham off the call so I can go and research this? <laughs> yeah, Cthul- Cthulhu <coughs> Realms. Yeah. Cthul- I mean, it plays... Exactly the same. Uh, I think there's maybe a couple of other sort of bits added into it, but I actually I prefer the art in Cthulhu Realms. It's kind of cartoony sort of Nickelodeon style cartoon sort of art. Oh, yeah. um, whereas I think Star Realms, dare I say it, it's generic sci-fi spaceship. You know, I don't think that it's too fancy in the in the in the art. No, no, I agree with you. It does feel like they've kind of given it to somebody that knows their way around Photoshop and knows their way around Microsoft Paint, and they've went, "Go make a spaceship," (laughs) kind of thing. And they've went, you know, "Oh, that's that's kind of fine." I mean, there's nothing wrong or offensive about this art, but it it just feels a bit. Yeah, it could be any picture of anything. But then again, you don't play it for the art. So, so when did you get back into things? You mentioned obviously your sixteen players of Magic. Which I, yeah, <laughs> when um, when was it you started? Kind of, when you would say you started kind of really getting back into things. Well, I fell away away from it in you know sort of eighteen, nineteen, twenty when I was that age, and then probably about three years ago, um, my brother was reading um, Cardboard Children. All right, the Rab Rab Florence. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Good old Rab, I know he listens. One that he does on uh, Rock, Paper, Shotgun. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was coming up to my brother's birthday, and he'd sort of mentioned a game called um, Murder of... Is it Murder of Crows? Yes. Okay, yeah, I've heard Just of a that. card game. Yeah, yeah. And, and he'd, he'd sort of mentioned it, so I thought, you know what, I'll get it for his birthday. So I got that, and then we sort of played that, and my son, I think he maybe would have been like seven, eight at the time, and we were all just sort of playing it, and it's, it's a decent little game, and it's like, Oh, yeah, I, I kind of miss this, you know. All right, I play with my son and stuff. It makes it sound like I never spoke to him for eight years <laughs> of his life up to that point. But um, Just, you know, it was getting away from consoles, and I work in IT, so you know, I'm staring at a screen all day, and everything's virtual. Yeah. You know, whereas the actual opening of a box and everybody's sitting around a table, so. 
the first couple of games I bought would have been about three or four years ago. We went to a local shop here in Aberdeen, um, Plan 9. I don't know if you've ever been up to Aberdeen or not. Yeah, um, I have. It's the Granite City and it's incredibly lovely and the streets are very, very wide and everybody who see appears to have a reasonable amount of money about them. <laughs> <It's weird>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kind of like that, except the word lovely should be grey, I think you meant to say there. Um, but, so the first couple of games I bought was uh, Caverna, great gateway game. <laughs> um, yeah, that's two? right up and there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm trying to think what the other two were, but... Um, so me and, my, me and Thomas, my son, we played... Caverna, and I, I really liked that, and so did he. Actually, I think he probably beat me. He seems to beat me at everything. But um, and from there, it's grown from I've got three games to I think it must be over eighty, touching ninety now, and that's just in like three, four years. He's so just a bit of an amateur then, in terms of yeah. collecting board games. Because it's, it's weird, though. It's I've not. I probably quite shamefully say I've not played any of them as much as I probably should have. You know, when you're spending 30, 40, 50 quid on a game, you'd like to think that you'd get, you know, many, many plays out of it, like what we did with Jim's Super Cluedo Challenge back in the day. (laughs) Good old Jim. (laughs) Good old Jim. But it's... um, I like trying new mechanics. You know, and before I even get a game, I often... You know, I'll have read up about it usually, unless it's just an impulse buy when I'm in, um, you know, down at Plan Nine or something. Yeah. But usually, I'll have read up it, and there'll be something in it that really gets me interested. Like, for example, um, Robinson Crusoe. I really like the idea that you could get a, you know, an event card, and you could either deal with it now or it could go into the deck, sort of thing. Yeah. And it might come up later. Or I really like that mechanism, and I just, you know, almost fantasized about. Doing that, which you could do with a normal deck of cards, you could just take it off and put it back in and wait until it comes out again. But you know, it's it's these sort of mechanics that I like playing, and and yeah, I, it's always the next one, and it's a horrible, horrible habit and a, a bankrupting habit to have, to be honest. But, uh, yeah. I think I think the issue, the issue at the moment, and it's a relatively serious issue, is that we are entering that golden age we were entering past a little past the golden age where there are lots and lots of games appearing on the horizon and there's quite simply getting to the point where you're having to make kind of decisions on whether or not to to kind of jump in because there appears to be um, at any one time there appears to be about five or six different games that I kind of like the look of, and then I mm-hmm. forget about them, and then I remember they exist again, and then I get all excited, and then I forget about them again because, lo and behold, kind of something's come along. Something else has come up, yeah. Yeah, and I do hats off to anybody that um, <clears throat> maintains a very lean collection of games because I think it can yeah. be quite easy just to say, "Wow, that's um, that's kind of very, very, very good." Out of the games, I mean, out of the games that you would like to play more, because mm-hmm. we could ask favourites, and everybody comes up with a, oh, I'd like, you know, this one. Yeah. And everybody yeah. usually says about the same five or six games. Is there any games that you would like to get back to the table kind of more? Caverna. Okay. Um, what else? Imperial Assault. Pandemic Legacy, Memoir 44. Is Memoir 44 as good as everybody says it is? Because it has become kind of like, um, it's become like head's teeth at the moment in terms of being able to get a hold of it. Yeah, I mean, I kind of justified it as a his- history lesson for my, my son and daughter. <laughs> In in that you know I, I I wanted it but it was yeah. it was enough to make me go yeah this will be edutainment or whatever you call it um, but again the thing that the thing that um, that interested me about that was the is it the command and color system it's called where yeah it's it's the sort of card play where you get cards 
and they only apply usually to one third of the map and you can do stuff and it's supposed to simulate the fact that you know orders to troops in war is difficult to you know or whatever it is i don't know if it is supposed to simulate that but it kind of feels like that <laughs> that you know you're struggling to get everything you want to have done because you're not getting the order through from the order deck sort of thing yeah um and it's good but again it's one of these ones where i i would like just to to you know get it played more um like yesterday my son wanted to play x-wing so we were clearing the table to get ready to play X Wing, which is another game that it's it's actually his game, but yeah. it's another game that we've not played a huge amount of. You know, we've had skirmish battles and stuff in the past, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but every time we go to play it, we need to you know almost play the basic rules to get going again, sort of thing. Um, and then his mate came down, and then they played X Wing, so I was sort of like, oh, I'll go and sit in the living room then, <laughs> you know, sort of. You've been but, used up. I've been usurped. It's like Lego all over again. Oh my god, Lego! Yeah, is he kicked out? Is he kicked out? His Lego connection. I was connection. kicked out years ago. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. See, I yeah, still. I was. Mm. Yeah. It's just a bit. I mean, he doesn't get Lego much these days anyway. But he's always been a, a boy for. He'd buy a set and he would leave it on the shelf, made. You know, so there's there's not sort of crazy models of half this thing and that thing with a bit of this stuck on the side, but yeah, I was I was fired quite a few years ago. Have from, you from seen the Lego trade? Have you mm-hmm. seen the six hundred pound Millennium Falcon? Yes, I have. Have you it, got to the point in your mind where you're trying to justify being able to get it yet? No. I've never, I think, in all seriousness, I've never been one for buying Lego for myself. Although I really liked making it, I kind of got all that fix when, because Thomas used to really like Lego, so I was involved in that. Yeah. But it's it's weird, Lego's never been, although I love Lego, it's never been one of these things where I, I felt the need to go and buy, and yet... I feel the need constantly to go and buy a box full of cardboard, get it home, <laughs> punch it all out, and then leave it on the shelf for for several months without even playing it. It's like it. It's it's the purchasing thing and the opening of it and the punching. That's it. That's fine. I'm done. I don't need to. I, don't, know, need to it's, it's, I don't need to play it. I can no. imagine what the game's like. So I can just... appreciate the craftsmanship that went into these models. That has <laughs> yeah, done exactly. a fantastic job on that. Yeah. And uh, yes, the artwork on there. I do like how you've managed to section off the inlay um, <laughs> so that I can store the stuff again. Because let's face it, this is going to get stored for a long time. A long, long time. <laughs> it's out in the back. Which yeah. is maybe, <clears throat> maybe hitting Fantasy Flight. Maybe that's why yeah. they do the trench. Maybe. Maybe because secretly at the back of your mind you're going, I've just put Armada away. <clears throat> and those models. Have you have you got Armada? Ar- I Armada. have got Armada. Yeah, Armada. <laughs> Armada. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Cornwall version. It's the one down. No, it's the Somerset version. It's the, I was going to say, you could also do it the Taggart version where there's been Armada. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. <laughs> oh dear. I might just uh, I might just um I might just edit that and have that at the beginning. And have <laughs> <laughs> What's that uh, over there? It's a murder. Our murder. <laughs> I'll never well, win cool, cool, never cool. win with that capital ship. <laughs> and he's meant to be swarming those TIE fighters. Has anybody told him what he's meant to be doing? <laughs> Dear. No. Um, <clears throat> what big games are you looking forward to? The Fallout one, not the miniatures one, but the the fantasy fight flight. Um, I don't know, kind of Zia esque sort of one, I suppose. Is mm, it? Yeah. Um, I've I've ordered that for my wife to give me for Christmas. So <laughs> I've sent you the link. I've put it on Am- the, Amazon. Oh no, I've actually somewhere. ordered it. There you go. It's on my Amazon wish list. I've actually, yeah. <laughs> I've ordered it and paid for it. All you need to do is wrap it and put my name on it. <laughs> you just need to give me the money. And then yeah. I, all I need to do 
is act pleasantly surprised when I open it <laughs> when uh, when Santa comes down the chimney. So isn't that gonna <laughs> gonna be nice? Um. <laughs> um yeah, so there's that one that I'm looking forward to, mainly because I had such a enjoyable time with Fallout Four, which will probably be controversial to people possibly. Um so I enjoy playing that and I th- it's weird. In my head there's there's over the past few years there's always been Oh, you could make a board game like this. Like probably everybody who listens to, you know, there's that one great book in you. It's that one great board game sort of thing. Yeah. And I, I always kind of had a, uh, an idea of sort of a survival game. I think it's from watching too many hours of Daisy and <laughs> things like that on Twitch as well. Um, where you know a tile based one where you might uncover it or you know do what you want, might encounter raiders sort of thing. But I'm just not that creative to sort of think of ways to do it I could use this dice and I could roll it and that could be the number of spaces I move <laughs> you're a genius Graham is he just going to write that down no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> actually I might I might do two different types of dice and then roll and oh. move and one of them could be for each leg and then as you, <laughs> and then as you get injured tripped you, again you change the, you change the dice <laughs> And if you don't roll the same number at the same time, you fall over and you get eaten. It <laughs> uh, seems pretty hardcore. That there will be some. Uh, there'll be some day out there that has has taken. <laughs> has this very mechanic? It is. It is. It's roll. It's roll and move. But it's roll and move it's different with a plus. difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, roll and move extra. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. No, I was going to say, is it, and 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 is there anything else that you've got? Because you've obviously you've got that sorted out. But uh, anything else that's kind of piquing your interest? I've, to be honest, I've not really looked that much recently. And if I'm honest with myself, I'm a bit of a, I judge a book by its cover. Right. You know, I'll I'll look at a book. I mean, I don't read much, unfortunately, but <laughs> I, I'll look, look at, at a you book. You look at a lot of covers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, look at me. Nah, don't like that one. That's don't crap. I? But and it's the same with board games. And I've found that likes of I've got alchemists in my um, collection. Yeah, and that was one when I remember seeing the. Uh, am I allowed to say Dice Tower? Of course, yeah, 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 no, no. I saw the, the old, Dice Tower video. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, video on it and the the sort of screen, you know, the title screen, and I was like. That game looks rubbish. But it was just because I was going through, you know, I was just watching everything. I was consuming anything about board games at that point. So I watched it. And by the end of it, I was like, that game looks amazing. And I do, unfortunately, I I do have to interrupt you and say that other towers are available. Okay. (laughs) Terms and conditions available on request. (laughs) Yeah, so I feel like I, you know... If it's not brand, I'm maybe just a sucker for advertising and corporate branding and stuff. But you know, I I need to research a game. I can't usually just impulse buy something that I don't know about. And it's probably quite rightly for a thirty quid game. You're not going to just go and buy it just because you're going to buy it. So I think. But. What's your um? Do you um? Do you jump into the the Kickstarter then? Are you are you a Kickstarter I've, type? person not really and i think that's kind of because i judge books by covers <laughs> in that you know i yeah I, I don't really i've only really done a few um i did deception murder in, murder in hong kong yes uh i did secret hitler i don't know why i did that i've never played it yet actually but i did secret hitler which actually came through really nicely finished and yeah I like that, uh, and the football game, which came a few months ago, which was London Board Games Company. It was indeed, yeah. Which was Mark, I think, and Simon. Yes. Yeah, I think it's Mark and Simon. Yes, and that. Um, um, yeah, and they're doing really well. Their um, their games going yeah. going everywhere and seems to be getting kind of reviewed. They're kind of like. Um, just right. I think they're like Dave Newton, who did Temp Work Assassins, and he just seems to keep kind of selling more and more copies of that game, and they seem to be the same. I don't know if they're yeah. doing anything, anything else. What's the football game like? Have you played it? Not yet. <laughs> See, now this is this is something that popped in my head 
earlier was that I used to think, how can people have a shelf of shame? You know, there's an old shelf of games that I've yeah. bought and I've never played. But I've I've got maybe one, two... I've got Terraforming Mars that I've not played yet. Oh, you don't have to worry I've about got, that. I've got... Why not bother <laughs> just playing that bother. one? I've punched it and that's good enough. That, that's I'd probably punch it out the window if I were you. <laughs> Um, you, I, I did see that you didn't think it was very or I did hear I, I, can't remember I don't know was I was kind of like um, it was kind of like what's the best way to put it it's very very dull Euro okay it's good it's machine building I can see why people love it and like it you know and bring yeah. bring me your wrath internet because I've had it before but the <laughs> fact of the matter is that you know I think one of the things that made terraforming Mars not work for me was because the guy that owned it I was sitting out across from him and I was saying you bought this for £65 because he told us yeah I paid £65 British pounds for this he said yeah. and the components and it's just a bit yeah it's just a bit well you would have noticed kind of punching it out I, I did yeah it's it, it did not go unnoticed um by myself when I was doing that. And engine building, thought, engine building is really good. Don't get me wrong. And see, in terms of engine building, you can get to a point where you're kind of linking this to that, to this to that, to the next thing. But there seems to be a point where you, rather than it becoming more difficult to reach the end, it becomes almost easier and easier. And you're almost racing to stop okay, terraforming yeah. the planet because you know that somebody is. Somebody can We've get over terraformed it, Captain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't even yeah, no, no. physics captain. Look, it's getting too <laughs> warm. And um, that was the point. There was people yeah. in the game that could say, "Right, I've got what I need to do," and they got an early lead. And all they then needed to do was to say, "Right, I'm going to heat this thing up as quickly as possible, flood it as quickly as possible." And you're like, "Well, there's not an awful lot you can kind of do." I think. I don't know. I kind of look back and think I was a bit overly harsh on it at the time. But compared to... Do you know what the thing was? Is I was staring at it and I was thinking, £65. And then I was thinking, Mechs versus million, Minions is £65. Yeah, no, I know. And Oh, I've gone and done it again, haven't I? We should have like a Mechs versus Minions bell in the show. But <laughs> um, no, um, I don't know. I will probably play it an awful lot more and then my opinion will... Kind of completely, Change. completely changing yeah. it, but no. Going going back to your point um, about not playing kind of games. Games, yeah. I mean, is it is it a time thing or is it a learning thing for somebody that kind of so so somebody that is, is the end user? I mean, what is yeah. stopping you from kind of playing? And what do you think? What do you think actual um, game designers can learn? You know what's going to make it easier to get you getting something to the table. It's it's weird. It's a bit of everything. I mean, one of the the best things about a game to me is the anticipation of going to play it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that I've got a new game. I've read the rules. I've watched you know a video on the rules. I've punched it all out. You know, way to play it, and it's. It's kind of almost nothing can live up to that expectation of what you have sometimes of what the game's going to be like. I mean, often get, I'm not saying that all games are rubbish; they don't live up to my expectations, you know. <laughs> yeah, yes, but, you are. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's uh, you know that's that's almost peak enjoyment sometimes. It's that in- anticipation of of getting the game and playing it, and then. Often the game you'll play it and it'll be good and you'll play it a few more times and it's still a great game, but it's plateaued a bit from you know I expect it to be this good. There are the odd occasion where, let's just say it's not a game where I've bought, so therefore my expectations of it will be low, mm-hmm. or or I won't have any, and then you go in and it's like wow this is fantastic. But I think with that one you've almost got to watch. Is that because you, you had no expectation of it before and, you know, is that the reason why you thought it was fantastic, Graham, sort of thing? But, yeah, and there's the mood at the time as well and there's also who you're playing it with and there's also, there exactly. is the, let's face it, there's the comfy doovy games. I mean, exactly. Yeah. there is like, for myself, it is, it's what the kids like to play. I mean, yeah. yesterday we played um, Escape from Atlantis. 
Brilliant game. Which is good fun. It's very yeah. simple. Everybody can yeah. sit down and play it. My, I'm playing it with my eldest two. Um, mm-hmm. I'm feeling that the youngest is old enough to step in and probably kind of start mm-hmm. playing as well. But everybody yeah. knows the rules and we can get kind of get going. Yeah. And then sometimes it's easier for them just to do that than to sit down and learn a couple of games. But on the other side of it, um, I think I mentioned quite recently in the show we did with Steve, Steve Tudor that mm. um, I played, I sat down and played Viticulture, which was, oh, yeah, yeah. nobody had played that, you know, no, um, mm-hmm. neither of us, you know, the kids had not played that. Um, and that was very, very easy to kind of pick up. It was, it didn't require an awful lot of, oh, just give me a second while I go through the rules. It was fairly kind yeah. of, fairly kind of, kind of straightforward. And straightforward, yeah. I don't know. Is it a case that you've got to actually start thinking about not just putting the rules out there and the mechanics out there, but also doing like an introduction on this is how you should play, this is how you should do your first couple of rounds kind of thing? Yeah, it's 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 weird. I think when you're, you know, you're going to play with other people, you've almost got to think of who you're playing with as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, your kids. I mean, I play a lot of games or probably the vast majority of games with my son. Mm-hmm. I've got a couple of guys that I play with through work and stuff we do have an evening and then the other sort of gamer group that i have is my family you know like my mum and dad who are in their 70s and make um revolution a a real laugh because they can't actually remember (laughs) what they're doing or who they are so it's like an extra wild card thrown in there um (laughs) just some kind of randomness yeah so i mean one game that we've actually you know for for my family group um one game that we we all like playing is Sherlock Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Yeah, simply because it's uh, everybody gets gathered around, put the map out, the newspaper, spread them about through the people, and then it's just you know reading. It's kind of the old stories around a campfire almost thing. You know, it's just you're reading, interacting. Everybody's coming up with thoughts and stuff, and we're terrible at it. You know, I think we've. We've not solved any of the crimes so far. We're about five cases or six cases in. You just compare. You can do the thing where you compare, like what Sherlock Holmes score is, oh, yeah. and you get to the page, and it's just Sherlock Holmes just shaking his head. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. Sherlock Holmes did this in one visit to the toilet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he was gazing. He was. He was looking straight ahead. Whilst doing his Sudoku, exactly. he um, discovered that it was this. How do you know that? Yeah. Because he yeah. looked at... Uh, we went to 40 places or whatever. So. It's like, um, I've heard that, I've not played it myself, but I heard it's almost, sometimes it's the kind of, the thread that they follow is almost like the one that Ted Rogers used to follow on 321. Oh, yeah. 321, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we better explain. It, it can be. Yeah. I think... Yeah. But three, two, one was a game show because they used to have game shows on Saturday evenings, and yeah. that didn't involve Z-list celebrities <laughs> or zany members of the public. And Ted Rogers used to have this, um, and we might even put a link in the show notes because you it was should, it definitely. was absolutely fantastic. But they used to have sketches. They actually used to have people writing funny sketches. You used to get kind of different actors involved. Three, used two, one, to, yeah. And they used to do these like miniature kind of sketches, and then at the end of it, or little numbers and stuff. And at the end of it, they would give a clue, and then yeah. they would say, and they would say, you could either I think you could either keep the clue or you could throw it in the bin. And then it was like the 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 cue was like a hair a, like a, a hairbrush or something like that. And yeah. then Ted Rogers at the end used to concoct this mega story <laughs> about five they minutes were. long that led all, you know, you've got a hairbrush. Now, hairbrush, you might be brushing your hair. And, of course, you might wash your hair as well, which means that you might be using some shampoo. And, of course, you can shampoo your carpet, which means, yes, you've won a Hoover. And that was... <laughs> and the guys were just... You could just see the contestants standing there going, what? But we'll get that up in the show notes. But, yeah. Yeah, no, I, it would always be Dusty Bin as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was the booby prize, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, it was always fantastic. It used to get oh, it was just nineteen. I'm in a big nineteen eighties nostalgia trip at the moment, and unfortunately, just as a follow up to the episode <laughs> that we did with Steve Tudor, and I'm sorry to interrupt your chat, Graham, but they announced today that they're no longer going to be printing the yellow pages. Really? Yeah, the two thousand and eighteen. 
I think the 2018 to 19 run is going to be the last one. They're fully going digital. So there you go. Sales, sales of fly <clears throat> fishing by J.R. Hartley will plummet. Well, then. the funny, the thing that did have me laughing out in the middle of the office was at the bottom of it. They had the link to the YouTube video for the J.R. Hartley advert. <laughs> So I'm just like going, uh, guys, we're not only about board games, we're topical. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. But no, going back to it, I mean, <clears throat> is it is it instructions? Is it being able to get everything together? Is it as you say, is, is is it the is it the people? Do board games have to think not only about the game, but do they have to think about how they make it easier for you to kind of play? I think, um, you know, the easiness, the almost barrier to entry, you know, of getting a game to to the table. If it's your first time and the rule book is a good rule book or there's a video on it, you know, not everybody can just read something and take it in or, you know, know how to, you know, how to play the game after reading a heap of sentences. Um, And I think, you know, YouTube and that and a lot of these, you know, watch it played and all that sort of stuff is great for it because... You know, I, I certainly learn more visually than I do reading, or, or you know, I learn by playing around. You know, uh, uh, for instance, Doom t- Doom Town. Have you ever played Doom Town? No, but Car- and, card game. Andy goes on about it all the time. Now, I've not played it massively, but it's a good, it's a, another one of these games I'd love to get to the table more often. But the reason for that isn't down to the rule book. It's actually. When you start playing it, it tells you to take these two sealed packs of cards out. This is your deck, this is my deck. Don't shuffle them and just draw five cards. And then it's got a story in it which says, draw these five cards. You should now have this card, this card, this card, this card. And I know it's all it is is that they've set the cards in a certain order so they know what it is that's going to come out. Yeah. It's like magic. <laughs> you, know, it's, you should have these cards so you can then use this and this and you do that. And then draw two more. You should have picked what? How does it know what cards I've picked? <laughs> you know, but it's, just like, that to me was a brilliant way to show you how to play the game because it actually talks you through an entire game whilst you're playing it with these pre-built decks of cards, and then you know you just shuffle them after that and you carry on yourself. Hmm. Things like that. But there's, I've not actually listened to your your um, one where you had the guy from Dice Don. Mike, yeah, that's because I yeah. keep throwing out. And I throw out episodes every like three days at the moment, so it's, you know, I don't, I don't. It's like one of the things I ask people when they come on is, is you have, have you, it doesn't matter if you haven't listened because I know there's people still catching up from like February, so yeah. But I mean, I, I'm not that far away, but it's <laughs> it's um, it's that one. I mean, that one I seen you put it out, and I I went and had a look at it, and I went and had a look at it because it's Kickstarter just now, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's and well, they say Indigo, uh, Indiegogo. Yeah, Indiegogo. <laughs> sorry, Indiegogo. Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. That's all right. <laughs> um, but that to me looks like another type of magic. You know, it's like that would be great if if it if it go, lives up to what it's saying it will be, and there looks to be a lot of people on board with it, but. Yeah, I mean, if if you can get something that deals with the rules and teaches you how to play a game, then yeah, yeah, I think it's um, I think it's um, it's the actual mechanics because that's why I like um, Rodney Smith stuff. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a fan. I'll admit it. Mm-hmm. That's why I like yeah. kind of Rado stuff because they kind of get involved. And even the stuff, you know, Michael May, I've become a big fan. Go and, mm-hmm. go and watch Michael May's Two Can Play This Game no, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah, no, really I've good. watched him. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> but they, they, stick, they stay away from the theme and they stick right with the mechanics of the game. Yeah. And just a case in point, I mean, I've been, I was joking with Stephen Rhodes when he was on saying that I'm going to play the others. Now, I have picked up that rule book yeah. about three four times now and it's really really just what and it's one of these things that they've tried to build the theme around the actual game so as you're going through the rule book and you know in a lovely way they've included kind of snippets of encounters that people have with like the seven deadly sins and that so it's Mm -hmm. adding a lot of flavor text see trying to read the rules just to find out how to play the game it just yeah. adds. <clears throat> I just want 
when I read rules for something, I want a couple of things. I want yes, this is this is to, you should this is what you should get in the box. Yeah. This is how the this is how all the rules play. But I also like a kind of a quick tutorial. This is what you should kind of you should kind mm-hmm. of do and make it kind of easy to reference. Um, the thing with I found with the others, and I've still got the it's still it's still here, <laughs> <laughs> still sitting there, um, which is to remind me to actually get out and, and actually set it up and probably yeah. play it. But the rule book, I think it's one of these things that I'll need. I cannot just sit down and read the rule book and then think I'll be able to play it. I don't think. I think it's going to be a setup. It's going to be a playthrough by itself. I don't think you'll be yeah. able to to kind of do it, which is kind of interesting. Which is why, yeah, I'm with you. The 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 dazed um, the dazed app piques my interest, and I'm thinking it'll do quite well as long as they concentrate in a Rodney Smith type way of here's the mechanics. Yeah. This is how you yeah. play. My concern with it is that the guys will go, but you need to get the theme in there, and it's like, well, no, you don't need to get the theme in there. You just need to show me how no. to. How, Ex- to kinda, yeah. how to kind of play the, the theme, game. The theme should be in the board game. Yes. The th- you know, the, the the app, you don't need... To, it's not uh, Mansions of Madness here. You don't need it being the GM, technically. Mm. You just want it there to... So you're not going to the rule book and trying to find that bit that you thought you saw re- regarding this bit. You know, yeah. You just want the rules and the mechanics explained, yeah. Again, just as someone who is not designing games yourself... Mm-hmm. What's your view, kind of like on the on the price of games? This seems to be something which is kind of being brought up a few times, especially on the likes of Kickstarter. Do you think it's starting to kind of become a bit excessive? The kind of prices, has game prices on Kickstarter or any other place kind of just said, "No, nah, I can't, I can't do this, I can't justify it." it yeah, no, it is. It's. Um, I think the problem is, is that obviously, you know board games is getting bigger there's more and more people getting involved more and more companies making their own ones you know the 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 arrival of kickstarter i don't know how many years ago now but you know that way of getting something to market when you're not a big publishing company mm. it, it only adds to the amount of product that's out there and unfortunately you know one game rising sun was it the the yes. cool mini or yeah, not one yeah I mean, I actually, I'd, I'd recently bought uh, Blood Rage just before it came out, and I played it, and I really liked Blood Rage, and it was good, and everybody enjoyed it, and I thought, yeah, that was, that was good. And then I seen, obviously, Rising Sun, same people, Eric Lang and Cool Mini or not. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that, that looks good, and, you know, Japan's a cool theme, so I'll, I'll, I'll put in for that. And then all the stretch goals start happening, and then... Oh, these really nice coins! You could get them for just another twenty quid, and I was like, okay, well, you know, it's not come out of my bank account yet, so what do I care? So I think, you know, I'll go for that. Yeah. And then there was a couple other things like a bigger map, and then I looked at it. And I was like, I'm, I'm in for like a hundred quid, if not more, here. Yeah. And I just, that's just nuts. Uh, you know, I could go and buy a, a, you know, last generation console and get, you know, some games for that, you know. <laughs> or, and, or you could put the money down and you could actually buy yourself maybe a chippy, get a yeah. couple of Chinese I, Chinese meals, get your mates round and actually take some of the games off that you've got off on the, the shelf. shelf and no, exactly, yeah, this is the thing. And, oh. and I, I, I actively just went in and then just cancelled my, my thing to it. And it's... In the past, I'm not going to lie, I have spent, I think the most amount of money I spent was 80 quid mm. on Zia. Yeah. Now, Zia, I kind of, I'm not too bothered with that because, to be honest, the quality is great. There's lots of miniatures in it. There's metal coins already in it. It's a game I really like. We've played it quite a lot. It's a game my son really likes. It's kind of like just Elite, you know, the, the old PC game or, or the old the computer game. Is that Zia as in XIA? Zia. Yes, yeah. Right, okay. Um, And it's, you know, so I have done that, but more and more I'm more inclined to, you know, get a cheap game or one that's, you know, well, this is, everybody says this is a great game and it's on eBay for 15 quid or it's on Amazon for 20 quid just now. I'll get that instead, you know, rather than going the 60 quid for a, a big box game that 
I don't actually know anything about as yet because it's not actually released. Yeah, but uh We do like we do like Zia cards. <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to check. I I would just like to say uh that we've kind of been talking on and off to them about kinda of coming on. And uh-huh. uh, this is me publicly saying that yes, I'm still interested in have them coming on. <laughs> Because I'm looking, there's there's is the game that's another one of these games which I've looked at, and then I forget about, and then I'll come back yeah. kind of six months, and then I'll look at it again, and I'm kind of kind of interested. So, if you're saying it's very very good, then I think I'll I'll need to take a, a kind of another look at it. But again, I enjoy it, but then again, it's the one thing with reviews and all that sort of stuff. It's all very subjective at the end of the day. So yeah, you know. I'm kind of glad. Well, one of the things I'm glad in the game, the, the kind of the board game industry, is they seem to have the majority of people still rely on written text, and they kind of stay away from the review scores, which is yeah. kind of pretty, which is kind of pretty cool. Yeah. Which is kind of good. No, exactly. Yeah. You don't. You don't want to go down the old graphics sound <laughs> nine out of ten <laughs> from seeing VG hits or something. <laughs> Your Sinclair magazine. <laughs> or I oh, know I was I was Commodore all the way. Were you? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. and that's where we end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was obviously Big Jim's computer game magazine. Big Jim's <laughs> computer shop where he had you could get the Jim three thousand. Um. <laughs> and all it was is you used to hear him actually making the games, and all he used to do is get the microphone and just go do 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 down the microphone, and then he goes oh. oh dear. I don't know what's wrong, Graham. It worked fine when I was playing it earlier on today. <laughs> Jim, how do you... Jim would just come around and do a puppet show in your living <laughs> exactly. room with you holding a, a box with a twig out the top of exactly. it. Some kind of makeshift. And it says, no, no, you can't just press the button. You've got to say fire. Otherwise it, <laughs> otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> Big Jim's got a lot to live up to. I, well, I know. We've painted him some kind of picture. He's actually coming yeah. on next week because he is... Is he? Yeah, Good stuff. As I say, he's now head development manager of Asmodee. So yeah. Um, yeah. that's that's kind of good. Um, you know what's coming next, though? There is the, mm-hmm. the question that's become, it's become a firm favourite with myself. Everybody else hates it. But mm-hmm. you are walking down the street in the middle of a zombie apocalypse... Mm-hmm. The shambling undead yeah. are staring at you and making their way slowly towards you. And you run down an alley to which you see a fire escape, a fire exit door is slightly ajar. Mm-hmm. You sneak in, you slam the fire door behind you, you turn your yourself around, run into the main room and find yourself in the middle of one of the biggest board game shops you've ever seen in your life. It contains every conceivable board game that has ever been made. Mm -hmm. In the middle of it, there is on the floor a trolley. The trolley looks super fast, it looks super sturdy, it looks super robust. It actually looks like it's able to carry at least three games, including any expansions that's required. When you go on your travels, you're going to bump into people, either people in groups of ones, twos, twelves, (laughs) thirteens. And when you speak to them, the answer to the question of would you like to play a board game is always going to be yes. The question is, Mr. Burroughs, <laughs> out of all the games that are available in the zombie board game Emporium, mm-hmm. what three games do you take with you? Oh, I think I would take a card game. And it would probably be Netrunner. Okay, interesting. That's just come from nowhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Plus all the I expansions. Would... Is that included as just one? Yeah, you can take it all, yeah. All the expansions, okay. yeah. Okay. Cool, so, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so that's your first choice. Um, your second choice? I would... I'd possibly take Small World. Another one that you haven't mentioned at all in the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, um, just, yeah. No, Small World's good. I mean, my, my mum bought me that for my Christmas last year and she played it and understood it. So that was, oh, well, there was, you go. Yeah. So it's no, rev- um, no revolution then? No, no. 
So that's your second choice and your third choice. See, the thing is, we had Phil Collins on this and he took ages picking his games. Mm. So, not Phil Collins, you know, Phil Collins from Board Game Crate. Um, what's yeah. your... <laughs> 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 you would have known. You know. He um, was drumming away. He was, um... he was, he was <laughs> drumming away. How'd you fit in that gorilla suit? Um, <laughs> anyway, huh? no. And the third game. So I've got a nice card game for two. I've got a a good game that can go from two to I think it's up to six because there's variable map sizes, yeah, so small world, and expansions and stuff. Yep. And I would take. It's banging on the door, Graham. Banging on the door. Sherlock. Sherlock, really? Consulting Sherlock, detective. Sherlock, consulting detective. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's your three. Either that or. Cthulhu Mythos because I've not I've only done one case out of that so it was maybe a bit well more you got to decide yeah, you one. got to decide come on take Cthul- I'll take Cthulhu Mythos go. to go with a sort of zombie-esque theme so there we go <laughs> fantastic this yeah. is good this is good so you go you make your way out into the wilderness yeah leave Jim's big <laughs> game Jim, store Jim. that's what I should have called it eh for goodness yeah. sake yeah you missed a trick there I did it was like oh, I don't know it was like my last one <laughs> This is I expect you to, t- to expect you to talk, and I expect you to die. Um, <laughs> wreck that one up too. It's just my mind's just not with it. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Um, you know it's been it's been an, it's been over an hour, Mister Bill. Was it? Yes. Goodness me! And all this time, I've I've been staring at the same swamp monster on my screen all this time really so there you go yeah he's still up there at 4 one available so uh, i might just buy him <laughs> just get him or get the um the t-rexes the t-rexes you have to get the t-rexes. t-rexes see what they'd like it's just but, yeah. so beautiful just so oh yeah so yeah there's five of them lined up in a row so pretty <laughs> so pretty Pretty T Rexes. Shame you have to. Oh, their lipsticks. Oh no, their lipsticks not as bad <laughs> as the. Bad. They're all pretty bad. <laughs> it is like, as I say, it's like Andy Stewart or something like that, <laughs> doing <laughs> doing like Mother Goose. <laughs> and only people in Scotland will understand that. I think it's Andy yeah. Stewart. There's always a couple of them kind of floating about. The guy that's in River City, he kind of crops up. Nowadays, <laughs> he always plays the bad guy. Um, listen, thank you for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've I've really enjoyed it. Is there anything, you know, we do kind of like shout outs, is there anything that you would like to make people aware of that you'd like me to make people aware of? Uh, if they want to go and watch some fairly naff videos on YouTube, then they can check out my channel. There's not many up there. Um but What's it called? Board Grams. Fantastic. It's um Board is in board games <laughs> but there's only one Graham so I don't know why I called it board Grahams to be honest <laughs> uh, I'll get my son to change his name by deed poll so um, <laughs> but uh, yeah and uh, you can you're on Twitter I'm on Twitter yeah I've somehow got like 700 odd followers on Twitter I don't know quite how that's happened but uh, I think uh, yeah I can see no you're generally no generally thank you for all the the kind of the nice stuff that you do for us because it's thank you for all the hours of entertainment the hours I make it up as a and we say thank (laughs) you (laughs) no no no, that's just too far let's no keep it going no keep it going no you'll end up costing you something let me bask in the glory um (laughs) as I say we'll put the links in the show notes but go and go and check out um, go and check out Graham's videos Give him some, give him, force him to make a couple more. Please. Because they are good I'll, ma- I'll maybe just take up podcasting, because I can sit here just with a, micro- a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's it, son. You go and, play, micro- you go and start <laughs> podcasting with a microwave. Sit yourself in front of the microwave. <laughs> just Hours of fun. <laughs> I know, he's just like an hour and a half of just... <laughs> nee- <laughs> ding! Oh, I think oh, we're done. That's a good segue, oh, though. Dear. If you if you <laughs> if you'd like to keep an eye on what we're doing, and we advise you to make sure that you do um, 
pierce the film at the top of the pack before you put it in and remember to keep an eye on the actual wattage of your microwave oven because even though <laughs> normally you've got to make sure you tell the difference you might have a 700 you might have an 800 you might have as high as a 900 if you are putting in say a lasagna you have to reheat it's better to make sure that you're putting it on top of a plate so that the bottom of the dish doesn't get scalded quite badly as you know the microwave does cook in the middle and the heat the plate does help to kind of dissipate that heat throughout the entire meal itself Um, other cookery tips are available on we are not people that cook normally dot <laughs> com. Um, <laughs> this feels like one of those Charlie says um, <laughs> public just... service announcements. <laughs> and Charlie says, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Charlie says, like, I should, I wish I'd stayed in the cat category. Cat <laughs> this guy's mad. This kid just keeps putting me in danger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? He's got no common sense. Do you know what I mean? He's like saying, <laughs> send help. Um, if you oh, oh my goodness it's descended into chaos as we only know it would if you <laughs> like what you've heard tonight and um, I have no idea why so many of you still do there's going to be a stewards inquiry and I'm sure somebody's going to rock up and say you've been redirecting everybody to the wrong podcast that's why you're getting so many people <laughs> listening um, then you can follow us on Twitter, we're on We Are Not Wizards. You can follow us on Facebook, we're at We Are Not Wizards. You can follow us on um, YouTube, you go to We Are Not Wizards Tabletop and you'll find us there. Um, we might do a video because Steve Tudor challenged us to, so pay, pay attention to that. And I've been telling. You must, you must. I've been telling Graham the details and he thinks it's rubbish. But So that means we're definitely going to do it. <laughs> um, you can find us, if you want to email us, you can email us at magic at we'renotwizards.com or .co.uk. Anything at all, if you're running a Kickstarter, you'd like to come on, just give us a shout. We are, I think we're free in November, um, so anybody looking to do that, just give us a shout. We'd be happy to get people on. If you want to get us through the normal podcast places, we're on Spreaker, we're on Stitcher, we're on Acast, we're on Podcast Knife, which is worthwhile checking out. Um, Mm -hmm. We're also on Apple Podcasts as well. And as we like to say, if you have listened along tonight and you have enjoyed what you've heard, then drop us a subscription. If you really like what you've heard, then please give us a review. Now remember, don't give us a... Graham? One? Sorry. No, don't give us a ten. Oh, sorry, ten. Because that'll... that'll, Don't give us a one either. Don't give us a one, because Don't give us a ten, because that'll make us big-headed. Big-headed. But don't give us a... One. One. Yep, because that'll make us cry. We did rehearse this in the rehearsal. (coughs) Um... (laughs) Give us, give us a five, because that's average, and we are very average. Um, but the gentleman who's not been average tonight is the rather wonderful, um, I think it's just generally all round nice guy who have an awful lot of time for. Oh, st- stop it! Is the, the fantastic <laughs> Mister Graham Burrow. Thank um, you very much. Thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure. It's been too long, and I'm delighted you've been on for this evening. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, there's only two more things to do, mm-hmm. and the first thing is to remember that we are many things, but we're not wizards. Nope. Are we wizards, Graham? No, no. Definitely not. not. Wizards. Definitely, definitely not. Definitely wizards. not wizards. Jim was a wizard. Jim was definitely a wizard. It's a, d- it's a different story for another time. <laughs> That's a different story. Do you like my hat? It's okay, Jim. It's <laughs> nice and pointy eh, with stars. Eh? It can be yours for three pounds seventy four. <laughs> I could give you. A, can I give you a postal order for that, Jim? Um, oh, if you must. But you've got to add fifteen pence on for charges. <laughs> Good old Jim. Good old Jim. Good old Jim. A man that never existed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is to say goodbye. So it's a goodbye from the fantastic, the wonderful, the amazing Graham, Board Graham's, Mr. Graham Burroughs. Say goodnight, Graham. 
Good night. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Because people could be listening to this at any time. I just figured out. <laughs> so good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good mid morning. <laughs> How did you have a good lunch? <laughs> Are you looking forward to your afternoon break? Etc. Etc. <clears throat> and it's a goodbye from me. Remember, stay safe. Roll sixes. Um. People are important. Everybody's important. The guys that follow you, the guys that listen to you, the guys that retweet your stuff, um, they're all very, very good. Um, and they listen to you for a reason. And they're all very, very fantastic people. So uh, genuinely, thanks again, Graham, for everything that you have done for us. And we hope that you, if you're running your own podcast, if you're a creator... If you're a writer, if you're a designer, that you also find your champions. But until the next time, goodbye. Goodbye.